We are sitting in my tattoo shop, which is um, in the heart of East London on Hoxton Street. Um, yeah, and it's, this is my shop, Rose and Mercy. You know, opening a tattoo shop has been a real, like a long, long dream of mine. But it's, um, I won't lie, it's been, it's been, uh, we signed the lease um, for this shop in March 2020. And then two weeks later we were closed <laughs> for eight months. So it's been, it has been difficult, it's been, been a challenge. In one way it was really nice because it meant that I had some time to, um, to actually focus on the shop in a way that I, I, I might not have had we been touring. The other way it was like I, was, I would come to work and tattoo and then sort of think, am I, am I just a tattooer now forever? <laughs> like, is that like, am I still a rock star? You know, like, life is about balance, you know? And, and this allows me the balance to be as outward as I am with my music. If I was only outward, I, I, like, I think I would have probably run out of energy for that a long time ago, you know? Because you can't, you can't just be, you need fuel, you know? And this is, this is fuel, that's what this is. I'm a punk rock renegade A tattoo motherfucker dripping lust for a decade And you are my punk rock queen Champagne, please flower, laser beam You know, getting tattooed, I think, is, it's, a, it's a really intimate experience you know you're, you're you're trusting someone to change your body forever and um so like i have an immense amount of gratitude for everybody that comes to get tattooed by me because it's that's my you know they become the canvas it's like walking it's walking art this could be considered like the the entire songwriting pro the, the entirety of a life of a song yeah because we you sat you watched me write the lyrics this is the performance and then every day afterwards is the legacy he gets to listen to the song. But as the same with a song, once the performance is done, once it's written, it doesn't belong to me anymore. How can I quit you? No matter how I try. I'm only ever writing from my perspective, which is why it's amazing when people tell me how much is connected with them, because for me that's just my that's just what that's my truth, you know. Um, and I guess I just was gifted with um, a mind that is able to explain situations that a lot of us have experienced, you know, um, in a way that maybe others can't find the words for. So that's, that's my job. I am collapsing under everything I've known. I feel quiet. It's multi-therapy. You get the therapy when you write the song, from processing the emotions and finding the lyrics. And then you get the therapy of performing it, you know, where you can get to be like, you, you can experience the catharsis and, um, you know, navigate sort of, you know, a he heavy amount of vitriol, if you like, or whatever. And then you have the therapy of like, you know, helping other people, which is a, yeah, it's a, it's a blessing. It doesn't matter how much it hurts, it doesn't matter how difficult it is, like, if you can help someone with it, it's the right thing to do. Yeah, it's interesting, like, I, like it's while I appreciate what people go through and, and I'm glad that I can, you know, help them with that experience, that doesn't always, it, I still, have had to ex to live it, you know. So it's bit it's bittersweet.
my favourite street in the whole of London. It's like properly, uh, it's the last bastion of East London proper. Yeah, you said love. That song is about those times when you when you get your heart broken, you know, at three in the morning. When you get your heart broken at three in the morning, you know it ain't real, <laughs> and like you're gonna you're both gonna wake up the next day and feel really guilty about about some of the things you said. So, yeah, there's lucky for me there's a really good florist down the road. So like yeah, we just uh, we go there and we buy pink roses and we make up for it. And then we, we actually worked on this one, if you remember. I still remember the first day. I don't have very, I'm not very good at remembering like a certain gig at a certain time, but I still remember the first day we wrote because we wrote two songs just like immediately. Like quickest, most effortless writing that ever. I've ever done in all of my projects that Same. I've done. And, and I hadn't, I don't think I'd experienced that with someone else. So I said like, Let's do one album and then we'll just like you said do a quick garage tour. band, one tour, one album, no management, no booking agent, and it's and six, it was like that for a little while, about six months. Yeah, and then we played Reading Festival and I was like, I don't, this is what I thought. Yeah. But it was. Do you know, what? I might not have signed up before as well. I really thought that I was like. Oh really? Yeah, if I'd known, because I was really quite burnt out from like the whole trying to make something happen in music. I was quite content like. Just do music for fun, which is what it was. That, we that's, that's what we went back to. Play it, play it, play it from the top again. I think it's a really, really personal thing, right? Music with someone. Yeah, You're really vulnerable. Yeah, we we'll need both at some point. Yeah, but yeah. It could but, be cool for the vibe. But for now, just um, give me like oh, some straight of that, so that I can just tweak these lyrics into like a rhythm that works. Mm -hmm. When we get in the studio, the first thing we do is just like slowly help each other take the walls down mm. so that we can actually like be bare and like be vulnerable. And then and then it's just like it's that's actual freedom in it like mm. to actually write. Um, you can't you, you it's not tr it's not true and it's not honest if you're writing with your walls up. That's one round. Yeah. Did you feel that this was going your way? Are you surprised you're alone again? Empty stomach in an empty bed With all the little blue horrors Alive in your head And are you still sad? And the rocky won't help It just makes you more mad You wanna leave but you can't pack your bag They're all empty And he ain't calling you back And are you still down? The heavy is the head The cab is the crown off stage, it, people find it hard to understand how the on stage happens, and I'm my my feeling is like that's that's exactly the answer. It's like because of the show is the release for that side of us. I think. Go, go. It's like looking at a shark in a tank. Do you know what I mean? Like you, 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 you're told like that's this is a dangerous thing. You know, <laughs> the live show, you're in the tank. Well, I didn't really realise how much I needed it. Playing shows in my life, in as a holistic thing, I used to think it was like maybe the most fun part of my job or mm. something like that and I was I saw creating music as what I was my passion and I did the shows as part of that but I realized from losing the shows and we made a lot of music that the shows are, are far more integral to my uh, soul yeah to my soul to my human connection feeling positive about people and life like I so yeah, it's, quite it's, profound it's for me how it's much health. the show is a part of my health. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it is, it's like mental health, physical health, everything like yeah. without that. And, and I think neither of us realised how important it was. <laughs> you only 
get so long without oxygen, so long without water, and for an artist, you only get so long without art, you know? And um, I think we've done very well to hang on to this point, like, but it has taken a fucking dramatic toll. With the, with the studio, it's always been about like for me. It's always it's a, it's your moment to try and catch lightning in a bottle, you know. Like that's what you're doing. And the stage is when you release it, you know. Mm. And if you've got nowhere to throw your fucking thunderbolts, like where you're just you just feel I just feel electric all the fucking time. I'm walking around like a fucking incendiary bomb. Do you know what I mean? And I'm like, I'm I'm just ready. Yeah.